Welcome to the Grind and Gratitude Show. I am Danny Stone. Thanks so much for being here. You know that I love and appreciate you. Now, you guys know that I bring you really great guests, and this is no different. Right now, I got a very, very special guest on this episode on the show right now. So before I really let you know who he is, let me just let me tell you a little bit about this guy. You know, some artists find it difficult to step back into the spotlight after a long hiatus, but not for this R&B recording artist. Uh, he released his last full project back in 2009, and now he's back, everybody. He's undertaken a spiritual journey during this time, and it's required him to do like a lot of reflection and personal growth. From this, we get blessed with a, a, an amazing album called Bleed My Truth. This is his third studio album that offers listeners an opportunity to experience a journey of self-reflection. He's a singer and a songwriter, and one of the things that his style has been described as is a combination of soul, gospel, and pop all together. And so this album really explores themes of identity, individuality, sexuality, and love. And with no further ado, I got to introduce my man, Gary Beals. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Danny. I really appreciate you having me. Yes, man. Yes. So, yeah. Man, it's great to have you here. You know, two two guys from Nova Scotia. Yes, um, I know the Scotians representing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so to all of our listeners, we have listeners in about 19 countries. And so Nova Scotia is a uh, is a province or, you know, as you may know, a state in uh, in Canada and it's it's in the east coast of Canada. And both Gary and I grew up in Nova Scotia and we're proud to be from Nova Scotia. It has a a huge black um history and and we're both very proud of that indeed so so what's happening with you man talk to me a little bit about what's going on with you and, and yeah. what you what's what's what you've been up to gosh this <laughs> where do i start um yeah what's been going on i'm i'm in the process of releasing the album my third album my third studio album which i'm really excited about um it's been an amazing journey and um you know i'm still learning along the way which is, that's the amazing thing about it. You know, I've had some ups and downs, even through the process of just releasing some of my singles. And, you know, sometimes I find myself question, asking, you know, why, why, why? Um, and in the moment, it doesn't feel good. But then after you take a step back, you just realize, you know, there's so many lessons, um, so many takeaways. So I'm, I'm, today I'm in a very grateful space and, um, you know, I'm kind of feeling very emotional too at the same time. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm good. I love that. And so what, where does the emotion come from? What do you, what are you feeling um, emotional about? I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'm just being elevated to a higher level. Um, you know, it's almost like, I feel like, you know, like I'm on four uh, floor four, but now I'm being elevated to the fifth floor. And um, it's a feeling, um, I don't know if I can even articulate it, but, you know, it, that's, I just feel like I'm just moving up a, a bit, a step higher. I so can, it feels I, good, and I'm just grateful, and I'm just basking in that right now, yeah. Man, I love that, because that's what this is about. It's about gratitude, right? People mm -hmm. don't put both of those things together. They don't mm -hmm. put the grind and the gratitude together. And, and when I came up with this, with the, the title for the podcast, I was, I was thinking like, okay, to get what you want, you have to hustle. You can't be lazy, right? Yeah. But at the same time, we have to be grateful. And I love you hearing you say that. Like you're just taking it all in. Mm -hmm. You're appreciating the ups and the downs. And, and I love it, brother. I love to hear you say that, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> I love it. No, thanks, man. So how, like for people who don't know you, like how would you describe your singing style? Because like before we jump, we got to get into the album, but man, <laughs> the album is is fire, man. Like I'm telling you, it's 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 a it's a musical journey. Your range, your vocals, the musicality is is on point, man. It, it's 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 fire. So we, we're gonna get into the album, but like before we do that, how would you describe your style, your your singing style? So my singing style, I'm, I mean, my voice is very soulful, um, having come from you know being brought up in the church. Um, it's very gospel sounding, um, so soulful. Um, I would say very powerful and uh, there's colors to my voice. I'm starting to learn to use my falsetto a little bit more, which I necessarily didn't do, which, you'll, which you hear in the album itself. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, it's just an authentic, I'm 
yeah, sounding, soothing kind of voice, if I can say that about my own voice. <laughs> well, you can, no, you, you can say it. It's your voice. You can say whatever you want to say. <laughs> right. It's a gift. It's a, definitely a gift that, uh, that has been given to me. So, you know, it's a God-given gift that I'm grateful for. Yeah. Now, you said that you kind of grew up in the church singing. Like, did you always know that you had this gift or was it something you found out later on? How did you kind of know that you were meant to, to sing? Yeah, I don't know if I knew I was meant to sing, but I knew that my voice was gifted. I guess from an early age, like when I would, you know, sing in church and just the reactions um, that I would receive from the audience, um, which was different than when, you know, maybe someone else was singing. Um, so I always felt that my voice was anointed, that it was gifted. And um, yeah, and so I just try and find purpose in, in, in what I do with my voice and, and, and the different songs that I sing as well, so. Man, that's awesome. So like when you were singing in the church, were, were, were people encouraging you to, to take more of a, you know, a, a leadership role? Were, they, were you getting more solos? Or like, when did all that shift kind of happen from like just being, you know, a singer in the background to like, now you got solos and so on. Yeah, I mean, it was the encouragement from, you know, members in the choir who would want me to sing solo. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to sing, I didn't want to sing solo like too much because um, it also depended on the song. Like it had to resonate with me because that would be, you know, I mean, yeah, it just had to resonate with me. So um, yeah, I mean, the encouragement from, you know, family members just to, you know, just use my voice. Cause again, it's a gift. No, I love that, man. And so like, who, who were your musical influences growing up? My musical influence, well, I mean, obviously, cause I come from the church. Um, at that time, it was a lot of Kirk Franklin, Kirk Franklin and the family. I remember that, um, that yeah. album I used to listen to a lot. Um, so Kirk Franklin, some Donnie McClurklin, um, some Yolanda Adams. Um, but um, I, I was also a lover of like soul music. So I was very influenced by soul music. I guess that's where I get a bit of the soul from as well. Um, because my, my parents, my mom, my dad, they would um, play a lot of like Aretha Franklin, Otis Redden. I love Ooh. Aretha Otis Redden. Al Green, Lenny Williams, um, James Brown. So um, yeah, so th that's w that was my influence growing up, like musically from the gospel um, realm and then from, you know, kind of that soul realm. And then 90s r and B. I I mean, you have, um, you know, you yeah. have SWV, Boys to Men, Brian yes. Knight. Um, yeah, so that was, um, yeah, that's been my influence. Yeah, I think growing that's where up. I kind of stick, kind of. You know, sometimes we get, um, we get the pressure of trying to conform to what's happening, but I'm just like, I have to do what works for me and, and what's good for my soul, my spirit. So, yeah. Well, man, you know, it's interesting that you said that because you, you, you stayed in your lane in a time when so many people kind of are, are forced out of their box. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes you see, you see them uncomfortable as artists, you know, you see them singing these songs or, or rapping and you see that that's not really them. So right. like, how were you able to kind of stay in your lane? How, like, I'm sure people wanted you to step out. I mean, although, I mean, I've been there where, you know, I'm singing music that's not authentic to who I am. Um, and I guess that's what this album is about, this third album. Um, yeah, that's what it's about. It's just, you know, just living in my authentic truth wow. and um, the importance of that and and the energy that i give out and people will resonate with that and people will people can see and they can hear that you're not being honest or being true as much as we think that we can fool people but you know people people see that yeah i think they do see it and i think right now i mean you tell me do you see like a huge movement of people trying to like a people who want more of that old soulful music or that old 90s R&B, that more, you know, less auto-tuned music. Are you starting to see that from people? Yeah, I mean, I just was watching the Brandy versus Monica and, yeah. you know, the amount of people that was on, um, you know, that just the, the uh, 
just watching that and 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 the love for that music and it just takes you back i mean it's 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 music that hits the soul it's music that we need and then you know with everything that has happened with covid and just us tapping into ourselves and understanding the importance of tapping into ourselves and who is it that we are and going to those deep places to really find out who it is that we are and how we need to maneuver both through life um so yeah I, I just feel like that's where we're at and i think people are people are yearning for that kind of music i and agree meaningful music yeah music i think right now with every now. i think right now with everything that's going on you're completely right i mean people are feeling lost they're feeling mm -hmm. forgotten left behind um and and i think that with everything that's going on with COVID, i think it was a an opportunity for a lot of people to sit back and reflect on, do I even want to go back to the way things were? Because exactly. everyone's saying go back to normal, but what your job, you didn't like your job, your yeah. relationship was struggling, you weren't yeah. the best parent or whatever. Who? So I I've been asking people like, is that the normal you want to go back to? So over these last couple of months, like what, what has that journey been like for you in terms of understanding who you are and self-reflection and all that? Yeah, it's just been kind of an eye-opening experience for me. And I think I've always knew it. Like I knew that there needed to be changes in my life that needed to happen. But we're so on this grind, per se, that you're just maneuvering a boat through life, just, just, just living. And um, we don't necessarily take the steps that we need to take. Um, and then sometimes it's like sometimes bricks need to hit us. <laughs> or, you know, it's just like a brick needs to come our way. And, and, and sometimes you need to hit rock bottom to get to where you're supposed to be or to put you back on that path again. And so for me, this experience um, going through COVID, it's, it's been a chance for me to slow down because mm. before that, it was always, I always felt like I was pay, playing catch up like always, you know, just running on that rat race. And so it was great because I was able to slow down and really um, look at what's important for me and what do I need to put out there in the universe? Um, you know, what, what lane do I need to be in? And the importance of saying, no, that's not for me and, and, right. and being okay with that. And so that's been a learning lesson for me to be, to be able to say, no, that's, that's not for me. You know, you may have an expectation for me to do this thing, but no, that's not for me right now. And um, yeah, and, 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 and to feel good and, and, and to be able to sit in that and be okay with it. But it takes a lot of strength and courage to do that. Like, so people might be thinking, listening right now, thinking, you know, there's things that I need to either push back on, say no to, or say yes to myself. Like how, like how did you get that strength to be able to kind of just do that? Well, because for me, it's been a journey. I mean, I've been going through doing this whole music thing like, you know, I mean, well, I did Canadian Idol, what, back in 2003. I released my first album in 2004, my second album in 2009, and then this is my third album. So it's not like, you know, it happened overnight. These were things that I wanted to do, but I wasn't able to do. Um, maybe because I just wasn't in that position um, and then there was a, there was a learning lesson. Everything is a journey. I believe everything is a journey and, um, your time will come and, um, yeah, yeah, that's just, that's what it is. Yeah. I think we have to be faithful knowing that things are coming. And when you make the decision to walk in the direction of your goals and dreams or to become the best version of yourself, it doesn't, it doesn't look familiar, but mm -hmm. we have to understand that to become somebody that you've never been, it's not going to be familiar. It's going to be uncomfortable. And I think that's what we have to understand about our journeys in life. It's, it's not going to be comfortable getting to that next level, going exactly. from the fourth floor to the fifth floor. Right. You know, it, it might only seem like one floor up, but it's a big leap. Right? Yeah. And sometimes you have, I mean, I had to learn patience, you know, because I, I would get frustrated in the moments. Why is not this not happening? Why is this not happening? But when I look back now, I'm just like, oh my goodness, I am so grateful that what I wanted to happen then did not happen because it would have happened prematurely and it was not supposed to happen. There were so many learning lessons for me to grab along the way. And yeah, and yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm really grateful for that. Man, you sound like you're really in a great place right now. And, and I, I love it. Yeah. Um, 
you know, you mentioned Canadian Idol um, back in 2003. And I remember, I remember being proud sitting there watching and, and seeing you on, on the show. And you came in second on, on Canadian Idol. Mm -hmm. what, what did that do for you? Like what happened to your career after a Canadian, coming in second on Canadian Idol? Oh my goodness, it like propelled my career like by like 100%. Um, yeah, I mean, to because I before Canadian Idol, I was performing, um, you know, at uh, community events and churches throughout Nova Scotia. Um, and then after Idol, it just, I mean, it took me from performing locally to performing nationally and internationally. Um, it, it happened, it, it happened kind of overnight, it would happen very fast. It was the first season of Canadian Idol, so we didn't really know what to expect. Um, and parts of it, I don't even really remember because um, it was like an overtime, overwhelming time for me. But um, I'm grateful for that. I don't think if maybe if I, I don't know, maybe, I mean, it was supposed to be, I was going to say maybe if I didn't do Idol, maybe I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. But I can't even say that because, yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing because, like, think about it. I, I know a lot of artists, um, who've been performing, you know, since, you know, the 2000s and 90s. And many of them didn't even go out for Canadian Idol. They didn't even audition. Right. So why did you decide to audition? What was it that made you kind of be like, I'm just going to go for it when other people just were, you know, too nervous or too shy or too embarrassed? Or what if I don't win? You just right. made the leap. Well, because I was a fan of American Idol. Um, the first season of American Idol had, or was, it was about to end. And so I was so excited, like every, it would come on every week and I would just watch it and, and I would just act like I was on the stage performing. <laughs> and so when I found out that Canadian Idol was coming to Canada, I was just like, I was so enthused. So I was just like, yeah, we got to go out and, and, you know, I'm singing in, 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 in the church and there's a group of us who we love to sing. It was a passion of ours. So we're like, let's just go out, audition. And um, yeah, it worked in my favor, I guess. Uh, you guess, yeah, it really <laughs> did work in your favor. What are you talking about? <laughs> you got your third album right now. Right, Traveling right. all over the world, singing for people everywhere. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it worked out pretty good. <laughs> um, so how did you make that transition of going from like, you know, singing in a church to now, you know, being in a solo artist, you know, were there some challenges with that, like internally or with people around you, you know, because you were, you know, no longer kind of in the church singing? What was that transition like? Um, for me, I feel like it was an easy transition, maybe because Canadian Idol, it was su such a successful show. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it, it just kind of happened organically where, you know, I was, went from singing in the church to singing across Canada. And like I said, everything was happening so fast. I just was going along with the tide. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, and I had to, it's not like, you know, it's like you going down the river. It's not like you can really stop it. You just have to continue on with it. And that's really what it was for me. I just had to keep on going. <laughs> yeah, to ride the wave. You just had to keep <laughs> yeah. going, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so for you, right, what, what do you think, like, of, of these, of the three albums, right, talk a little bit about, like, where you were in terms of who you were at, at, at that time. So who were you, like, in the first album, the second album, and this album, like? Um, uh, yeah, who, uh, the first album was, uh, Gosh, I, it's funny because the other day I, was, I went back and I listened to my first album and I'm just like, oh my goodness, so many good gems on oh, there. Good. Um, but yeah, the first album, it was, yeah, I feel like I've been the same person, but there's just, I'm just, each album, I'm just digging deeper into who it is that I really am. And um, even like the messages um, in the, in the songs, I find they're, they're somewhat similar, but I just go deeper and deeper. And the, the, my first album, which was self-titled Gary Beals, it was, you know, kind of, I'm just hitting the surface. And then, um, my second album, the rebirth of, I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to go deeper than I actually, you know, than I actually did, but again, it wasn't the right timing. Um, and then this third album, which is bleed my truth, <laughs> uh yeah I, I i go deep in it and um 
yeah, it just feels good. So there's been that, there's been that journey. There's been that, there's been a difference in the, in the, um, in the albums. Um, but I, like I said, I feel like I'm the same person, but I just, you know, dug deeper into myself. Yeah, you I'm definitely more present. I'm more, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely more present right now. I love that word. I think being present, you know, showing up in the world and being present is, is something that's easy to do and difficult to do because there's so many distractions. Yes. Right. It, so you, you can be sitting with someone and, and mentally they're checking their Instagram or mentally their mind is somewhere else. And there's power in being present because mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're taking in everything in, in that moment, right. right. In that conversation, in that, whatever it is that you're doing. Right. So I really love the fact that you said that. Yeah. And, and, and even just before the call, I was just like, you know what, I just want to make sure that I'm present because a lot of what happened during Canadian idol time, I wasn't really present because it was a very over, like I said, very overwhelming. So I'm just riding the tide sort of thing. And so now I find it's very important for me to be present mm -hmm. even in with my friendships relationships is to be very present and bask in the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I love that. I love that evolution. And so, you know, we, we both come from, you know, a small place, Nova Scotia, relatively small. And what, and now we're both here in Toronto, the big city. Right. What, what, like, what was it like for you growing up in Nova Scotia? What was your experience like growing up in Nova Scotia? Oh, I loved growing up in Nova Scotia. I mean, Nova Scotia for me, I mean, I grew up, I'm from a small community called Cherry Brook and very family oriented. Um, you know, the church was the center of the community. Everybody's, you're, uh, either they're your aunt or your uncle, even if they're not, you're calling them aunt or uncle. Um, you know, everybody in the community, you know, all their news too. <laughs> um, but I just loved it, you know, and I was loved, like just growing up and I just loved that sense of community. Um, in Toronto, you don't get it so much, but you know, the last little while I've just, I, I built a good, um, uh, just a good group of friends where we have that sense of community and it feels good. Um, but yeah, just growing up in Nova Scotia, like, you know, just, I love nature. And so um, the water and playing in the brooks and, you know, making food with mud and, you know, doing that type of stuff. I'm just like kids nowadays, do they even do that? Kind of stuff, <laughs> Probably <you know>? not. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just loved it for that. Like I was able to be a child. And when I look back, like I reminisce sometimes on those times and it's just like, you know, I, I'm really grateful for my childhood because I really had a wonderful childhood and just the, the connections you make with people. You know, a lot of my friends from back home, we're still friends. We're still tight. We may not see everybody, um, each other, like all the time. We may not talk all the time, but when we get together, it's like there was no time in between. Yeah. Um, so just just that and then the just the rich history of of Nova Scotia and who we are and so that's why I walk with pride and I walk in my blackness because you know I understand you know people before Nova Scotia was like the people came, the slaves came from somewhere so the journey that they took so that's that strength that's resilience and so I walk in that and it's important for me to exude that and um yeah so, yeah, that's what kind of growing up in Nova Scotia was like. Yeah, man. In a I nutshell. <laughs> I know, I love that. I love the fact that you said that because, one, a lot of people don't know that there are sort of uh, the history of, of Black people in Canada. They don't know that Nova Scotia has a rich Black history. Mm -hmm. And they don't know that, you know, Black people are very resilient here yes. in, in Canada. We've been through a lot. We're still here, um, thriving. We've had you know, a lot of um, really successful um, Black people come out of Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. uh, people that we could look up to, you know, and Kirk Johnson, you know, exactly. amazing, and so many other people. So I love the fact that you said that, brother, because people need to know that. And, and I walk with the same type of pride as well, you know, mm -hmm. coming from Nova Scotia, you know, my father's from North Preston, Nova Scotia, my mother's from Jamaica. So both, I have some deep, deep, deep roots on both sides right. of my family. Right. And I, I walk with that pride as well. Yeah. So I'm glad that you said that. So let me ask you this, man. Um, why did you wait 11 years to come up with your next album? 
Oh my goodness, uh, why did I wait 11 years? I just had to really take a step back. I, uh, I kind of, I started to lose the passion for music. Um, you know, sometimes you just work with different people or maybe you're not working with the right people because I'm supposed to be in this lane, but I'm in another lane and I'm working with people that I'm not supposed to. So I lose that passion for music. It's kind of like a fish out of water. Like you're yeah. supposed to be in the water, but <laughs> yeah. take the fish out of the water. You know, it's like, that's not for me. And so it was really important for me to take uh, a step back because I always had a passion for music. I always had a passion for singing and I always knew that it was a gift that was given to me. Um, but I just felt like I wasn't operating um, at the level that I needed to operate. And I um, also needed to find who, I, who it was that I was. And, you know, I struggled a lot with my sexuality and kind of just hiding that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just had to come to terms with this is who I am and I need to show up as myself. Um, so it was important for me to travel. I believe, you know, I, I love to travel and I believe like that's one of the things, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing to do to be able to travel and um, learn uh, about other cultures and meet different people from all parts of the world and just to talk and have conversation and uh, to listen to just to how people have different mindsets and for you to, again, find yourself because you, you grow up and you're taught, you know, what you're taught from people around you, but who's to say that's the right thing or who's to say like, you know, you're, this is the thing you're supposed to be taught. So I just had to go explore and live. And uh, I went to Hawaii in 2017 for my birthday wow. and I went by myself and that wow. was a very, very, um, it was an amazing trip for me. You know, I really was able to really, I think that was what started me wanting to do the album um, because I was able to tap into who it is that I was. I remember, you know, I was there and I was uh, doing a bit of hiking on this trail by myself and I just started to cry and I didn't understand why I was crying, but I was just like that. It was healing for me. Um, and then there was just moments like, you know, just, you know, kind of, um, things about myself that I didn't like, but acknowledging that. Cause you know, sometimes we maneuver about and we're like, we're this way, but we don't actually acknowledge that this is how we are. Right. And so there were parts of me that I was, I just had to dig up and like, this is, this is how I am. I don't like that part of me, but this is how I am. And then, um, yeah, so it was just, it was important for me to really take a step back and understand who it is that I am. And that's how this album happened. And I'm so grateful, so happy for this album. I love this album. It's so personal. It's, yeah, um, it's everything to me. And I always say this, this project, I call it a project. It's not about me, but it's greater than me, you know, because I believe that other people will be able to resonate with, with the music, with the songs, with the lyrics. Um, and it comes from a very personal, um, a very deep place. Um, and it's, like I said, it's very personal and it's well, genuine. It's authentic. I yeah. love that. And so do you think that the, the trip to Hawaii, you know, really opened up like some of your truth and, and had you come to terms with your, your sexuality and all that stuff? Do you think that there was the trip that did that, it, it, that kind of really just made it, um, sort of brought it out to light even though, or what, 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 what was it? Like, yeah, I mean, even before that, I mean, I had come to terms with my sexuality, um, but it was more so around people who were, who were, you know, they were, they were gay as well, you know right. what I'm saying? Um, but I wanted to be able to be myself around whoever it is that I'm around. As you and should. So, yeah, and so that feeling that I would get when I'm around my friends, the joy that I would get, I was like, I want to experience that around everybody. Like, right. I don't want to have to box myself in. If I go anywhere, I just want to be myself. And so that was the desire for me. And when I went to Hawaii, that was kind of the transition to like, yeah, it's okay for me to show up in spaces where people don't expect me to be this. Right. And, and just be that. Wow. Wow. You know, I mean, there's so many, you just unpacked a whole bunch of things there. <laughs> uh, but I think being who you are showing up authentically, and I always tell people like, sometimes we have to put people on notice instead of asking them permission. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
And, and, and I think sometimes we go to people and we're so afraid what other people will say about us mm -hmm. that we're like hesitant to, to show up. And it's almost like we go to them asking for permission. Like, is it okay if I decide yeah. to be who I want to be? Right. Is, it, is it okay if I decide that I want to be a better version of myself right. and give me right. permission? As opposed to, I'm putting you on notice. Exactly. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. These are my hopes, my dreams, my goals. And this is what I'm going to do about it. Yeah. And you know? so I, I, I'm tired of playing small because it affected my relationships um, with, you know, family and friends. Like, my relationships were very surfaced. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't until, like, I showed up unapologetically as myself to say, this is who I am. And if you don't like it, that's fine. <laughs> you know, if, yeah. if me and you don't have that same energy, it's good. But yeah. I'm in a space where now I just connect with so many people from various backgrounds, you know, various sexualities. And it's a beautiful thing. And yeah. I'm just like, it, it, it works. Yeah. And I'm just like, I wish I would have knew that from a long time ago. But it's a, it was a journey that I had to take. And maybe somebody, maybe it's, this could be an inspiration for somebody else. Oh, it absolutely will be an inspiration for somebody else. And so, like, uh, was there added pressure that, because you were in the music industry and R and B artist, was there extra pressure for you to kind of like not be who you authentic? To? Like, was there, was there some pressure from the industry or being an well, artist? Yeah, there wasn't really any type of pressure. It was more so an internal struggle for me okay. because um, like nobody told me I, well, I've never, I, ne I wouldn't have conversations with people in the industry that this is who I was, right. but they knew, but obviously they, they wouldn't say anything right. um but it was just my mindset of this is what i am but this is wrong and so having grown up you know i grew up in the church and knowing you know homosexuality is it's a sin mm -hmm. you know in the black culture itself yes. and that's yeah. something that's still happening within the black culture yep. you know the hate toward people who are you know who are gay um and then in the music industry as a black artist i mean i don't know any black artists who are open about their sexuality and right. and it's almost like you're the it's not like you're taught that it's well it's almost like an unspoken language right. like you're not supposed to show up as yourself because that's who you are but kind of keep that on the hush hush Right. And I, I was like, I'm not trying to keep all this on the hush hush. I need to walk in pride. I like as a black man, I walk in pride. I'm a black man and I'm good with that. As a gay man, I should be able, yes, this is who I am. And so that's where I needed to get to the point. I remember the first time I was think I was in my thirties when I was by myself and I literally wrote on the paper, like I am gay. And I remember the tears just started falling down wow. my face. Wow. Um, cause that was the first time that I was able to say it wow. and yeah, it was really emotional. I was in my thirties, like, you know, I'm like, and I'm just like, it's yeah. So that inter, it was an in internal struggle for me because what was my paradigm and my paradigm taught me that this is what I should not be. And yeah, so it's yeah. a lot of removing of layers and it's taken, you know, it's taken years and I'm still removing, removing lots of layers. It's like, you know, I have all these clothes on and I'm removing the, the trench coat and under the trench coat, there's another coat mm -hmm. and under that coat, there's, you know, there's right. a sweater and under the sweater, <laughs> there's a t-shirt and under the t-shirt, there's, you know, a tank top. I'm removing, <laughs> I'm continuing to remove these layers and it's important for me to, to acknowledge that and understand that there are many layers to it and that's, it's taught me patience. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's not going to be an overnight thing but it's a progress. It's a, it's a journey, which is my, my truth. <laughs> no, just, just listening to you say all of this, man. Like first I got to acknowledge for you for just being who you want to be. Like it, it's so difficult. Uh, Sexuality is one thing, but it's just so difficult for people just to, to, to be who they want to be in, in, in simple terms, like right. make the decision to date who you want to date, right. to live to where you want to live, to speak the way that you want to speak. So mm -hmm. I can imagine that there was so much like, you know, this internal struggle with sexuality and the fact that you came out and did that, you know, I think that a lot of people are going to look at you and be inspired by the fact that you, you were able to walk in your truth Right. And you're still unpacking those layers. I, I think I think a lot of people are going to be inspired by that for sure. Yeah, and it wasn't just you know it wasn't just my sexuality, but it really affected other areas in my life. Like I said, relationships with people. Yeah. Um. You know, and just being able to say no 
to people. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, yeah. um, so it really affected that. Yeah. And, and 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 I did play small. Yeah. You know, now I just I I can just sometimes I gotta check myself. It's okay to show up. <laughs> it's okay to show up. Um, but now, yeah, sometimes when I show up, I just show up. Like this is me. Sometimes people say, "Oh my goodness, you have so much energy, or you have too much energy." I'm just like, if you only knew, I had to consume this energy for so long. Yeah. So that's yes. why you see all this. That's why you see this black boy joy because. Mm guess what, you, you, if you only knew my right. journey, how long I had to contain myself. Yes, yes. And so now I show up, I just, this is me. I love that, that is a, that's a powerful message, just show up. And here's the thing, like, do you want to spend time with and be around people who want, who love you for being um, somebody who you're not or a different, a lesser version of yourself? Don't right. you wanna be around people who want you to show up, be who you're meant to be, right. And, 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 and be authentic. Like I don't right. spend time with people who don't appre lo love and respect me for who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. If you can't, if you can't see that, then I don't have time for that. And right. I love the fact that you just, you, you, you stepped that you stepped up and you said, this is who I am. This is who I want to be. And this is the, you know, love me for me. Yeah. And now, when you do see that, it's funny because then you start to have conversations with other people and they reveal who they are. And it's just like, we're all going through this battle of trying to be something that we're not. And it's just like, when you have those conversations, it's so enlightening, it's so beautiful. Like so many people, you know, I'll have conversations with people and like, and we'll end up at the end just crying or they're crying because it's just, yes, yeah, an, an awakening. And, and we all have these layers that we're trying to hold on to. But yeah, you need to find the core of who you are. And a lot of us are just, you know, we're just sifting through. Well, well you also, you, uh, one of the things that you, a few, you said this a few times about being vulnerable and crying, like, you know, as black men, you know, we're, we're taught to be, you know, sort of assertive and, and, mm -hmm. and not show emotions and, and all of those kinds of things. And it has these negative effects on us because many of us have had past traumas or we've seen things or been through things or we've had our own internal struggles with being mm -hmm. a black man and maybe having black women kind of, you know, excel in their careers. And some of us have still been stuck. Like, what is it for you that just, uh, you know, opened up you being showing your emotions and being vulnerable and crying like, you know, as a black man? How, like, what was it for you that just kind of got you to that point? Yeah, it's just, it's just that feeling of relief when I would have moments by myself where I could just cry, where I allowed myself to cry, where I said it's okay to cry and let these emotions out. Like it's okay for me to bask in that emotion. Do I sit in that emotion for a long period of time? No, but I allow that emotion to go through. And then just being around other people where I can, I can cry and it's okay to cry. We cry together. Yeah. And, and the healing that you get through that, like it feels, it feels amazing. And so it's almost like, I want that for other people. I always encourage people like, if you need to cry, cry. If you need to express something, express something, but find that core group of people or that person that you can be yourself because it's so important. Like we're, we really hold ourselves prisoner in our own bodies. Mm -hmm. Like we maneuver both through life as, as, as slaves, as, mm -hmm you know, yeah, as inmates yeah. in our own body. Wow. And yeah, I'm just so like, no, I don't have time for that. Yeah. Life is short. The amount of people that are dying, young people that are dying, like, no, it's important for me to show up as myself. I love that, man. Man, you know, I think that's it too. It's, it's this release. It's letting go. It's, it's freeing yourself. And that's mm -hmm. what showing and expressing your emotions can do for you. Mm -hmm. And so how is, is that, is that what led you to bleed my truth? The name of the album? How did you come up with that title? Yeah, it was just, how did bleed my truth come up? Yeah, it was, I just wanted it to be something about bleed my truth. Like I said, the rebirth of my second album was supposed to be that. Yeah. <laughs> it was right. supposed to be me, the rebirth of like, this is new Gary, me stepping out. Right. But, and I, and it was a new Gary, but it was a new, it was baby Gary. <laughs> now I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm grown Gary now. So this is me bleeding my truth. Um, yeah, it just, it just kind of, I guess the name of it, it just kind of happened. 
So what was the process like sitting down and writing the, writing, you know, these songs and so on? What was that? What was that like for you? Like, you know, how, what's your process like? With this album, it took me a while to find producers. I think it almost took me two years to find a wow. producer to work with. Um, but it's funny because everything with this project has just happened organically. And I'm just like, along the way, I was just like, that's how I knew that this project was supposed to happen because I'm just like, if it wasn't supposed to happen, the things wouldn't happen so organically. Right. And so I was introduced to the producer, Loesch, um, I guess that was in 2018 um, by a cousin of mine. He's a hip hop artist, um, Terrell. And um, yeah, and we just we just clicked. Like I just, I mean, the, the goal was for him to just do two tracks. Um, and then I was supposed to work with another producer, but we did, we did me for me. And then we did a song on the album called good company. And I'm just like, okay, well, let's, let's just, I want you to do the full album. Right. And I remember the first time meeting Loesch in his studio, um, it was like, uh, okay, well, what are you all about? And that's when I was just, I was like, it was like, going on a date with someone and you just exposing your truth. Right. And so I had to be, I was like, I'm going to tell them that, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm gay and yeah. it's okay. And this is what I want my music to represent. Um, and so I went in the studio and, and I basically told them that was the first time I ever met somebody on a business level, on a uh, professional level, and just was able to speak my truth. Wow. And, uh, and it's funny because me for me was the first song that we did, which is kind of, you know, about so, that. So how did he react once you kind of opened up? He was, he was fine. It was like, yeah, like you make that a big deal. And right. it's sometimes we, we, we like, we make things such a big deal. And then it's just like, oh my goodness, you didn't <laughs> react the way I thought you were going to react. And it's just like, and that is why some, that's why I'm just like, it's so important for me to just show up as myself because it really is not a big deal. Right. 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 Um, yeah. Now, that first single me for me, you know, first of all, you being away for 11 years now when i heard me for me and i heard the song and i just kind of listened to it and then I, I listened to it again i'm like yo this guy can sing you know right off the top i'm like your range is i mean you came back better and stronger than ever it, it's soulful it's heartfelt it, it like you can feel the words that you're saying it's like i'm visualizing you as i'm without the visuals the visuals right. are amazing too Thank but you. when I first heard the song, I'm like, man, this is a powerful song. Mm -hmm. Like, man, congratulations. Thank I you. love that track, man. It's a great song. Thank you. And, yeah, and, and a lot of people have resonated with the song. It's funny. Um, before the, out, the single had came out, um, I met up with a friend, and his neighbor was like an 82-year-old lady. And she said um, that my friend had played the song for her. For, for her. And she was like, oh my goodness, I wanted to meet you. Like, I just love, I love the song um, because she had experienced like some molestation in her life and she was playing small like for so many years. And she said like when she got in her 60s, that's when she just started, you know, started dealing with what actually had happened. And right. she said the song spoke to me so much, you know, and now I can show up as myself. And I'm just yeah. like, I was so blessed by that. That, um, and that, that's the gift. Like so many people are going to resonate with this song because it's exactly what you're talking about. Just love me for me. Not mm -hmm. don't love me for who you think I should be. Exactly. Don't love me because of who I'm associated with. Don't love me because of, of, of my job or what you think you can get from me. Just mm -hmm. love me for who I really am. Yeah. And so many people can resonate with that because we wear so many hats in our lives. And I think because of all the hats that we wear and social media and all these other things, it's easy to get disconnected from your values and your yes. beliefs and who you are. It's easy. Oh. Right. So, so this song is like, no, it, you're perfectly fine. You're, you're, you're amazing. This is who you are. Love me for me. Yeah. And, and that's what it is. I love that, man. I think so many people are going to resonate with this song, man. I, I'm telling you. Yeah. And, and so how did you choose that one to be the, the, you know, the, the first, because, you know, bleed my truth and, you know, pictures and, you know, so many other ones, right? how did you choose that one? Um, it's funny. Uh, the first song that we were going to release, 
is not on the album. It's a song that I had recorded about four years ago, which was called Born to Fall. And I did a video for that song. I filmed the video, I think in 2016, but I was in a different place at that time. I was kind of like in an angry place mm -hmm. um, sort of thing. Um, so the video, yeah, it just, yeah, I just, it was two days before we were about to release that song that I was just like, no, I, I, I can't do it. I really? Can't. That close? Two yeah, days before? Yeah, wow. two days. And, and I'm just like, I cannot release this song. I cannot release this video. I just don't think it would resonate the way I want it to resonate. And I think people will misunderstand the message. And um, yeah, so, but it was hard for me because I had a team and I was just like, you know, everybody was ready for this to come out. And I was just like, I was calling everybody to say, okay, you know what, this is my, like, I, I'm, I'm making this decision not to release that. And we got to go with, um, you know, we got to go with uh, Me For Me as the first single. And I'm so happy that I made that decision. And um, I remember one of the members on the team was just like, okay, well, maybe you're just nervous. And I was just like, no. So, so I'm happy that I went with my gut that first, that, that, that time. Because there's so many times throughout this process that I didn't. And I, the last two or three weeks, I was like kind of being hard on myself. Because yeah. I was like, why? Why did I do that? Like, I didn't, like, I should have learned that lesson. Like, I need to go with my gut. Um, so, yeah. Well, tell your team that myself and my wife and my family and probably everybody else who listened to that track said you made the right decision. <laughs> me for me is the right, that's the right Thank single. Thank you. And, and, I don't, and I don't even need the assurance. I just know within myself it was the right thing for me to do. Of course and it was. I'm so happy that I went with that. Yeah, you know, I think it was in um, your track, uh, Bleed My Truth. And this really stood out to me. Can't oh, nobody... The song can't, itself? Can't, pardon uh, me? The song itself? The, the song. song. Yeah, I think it was in the song. It was, I think this is it. You said, can't nobody interrupt my meditation. Yes. Whoa, <laughs> I was like, yo, this man's talking about meditation. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that trip, that song itself reminds me of Hawaii. That was like my, if I could sum up my trip to Hawaii, it was, it's, it's that song. And so, I, I mean, I would love to shoot a video in Hawaii doing that song, but whatever. But um, yeah. So, so in That's making- That's favorite song on the album for me. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It, it, I listened to it. It was great, man. And so like in making the album, like what are some things that you learned about yourself in making this album? Oh gosh. What did I learn about myself? Oh, I've learned patience is important. <laughs> I've learned that uh, I've learned that I'm I'm very powerful. I'm powerful than I actually thought I was, and I guess that's something that I shy away from. And um, I also learned like that the answers are within, because I had almost like I had a team of people, but I was looking to them for answers, and sometimes we look to people for answers but really the answers are really within. And so I've learned that over the last probably two, three weeks as well, that it's just like, yeah, like I need to trust myself. And it's funny, like this, this album, like it, it's just the beginning of just the, well, not the beginning of the journey, but it's just, I'm in the middle of that journey. Um, and then I've learned, oh gosh, what, uh, what else did I learn? Uh, there's so many things that I've learned. No, I can yeah. imagine, you know, but you know, I, I'm glad that you said that because when you said you, you, you got to listen to yourself and you have the answers. When I first came out with my, my book, you have the keys now drive. I was mm -hmm. dead set on a, another title. I was, I was, I wrote the title down before I even started writing the book. I'm like, this is it. As I wrote the book, I said, no, this isn't it. And I said, it's about people trying to, like find their personal power and break through barriers and like really become who they're meant to be. And we're all looking to other people to tell us what to do. I was like, mm -hmm. no, it's not Danny's your chauffeur and he's going to drive you around because he has the answer. Right. You have the keys now drive. Exactly. And, and it just kind of hit me. It's like, yeah, you have the, you have the answers. We just have to learn to ask ourselves better questions and be brave enough to listen to the answers. Mm -hmm. And so when you said that, that just kind of, that brought me back to, to that. And even to be honest with ourselves, with the answers, 
Yeah. Cause sometimes we're not even honest with our own selves. <laughs> like, cause it, you know, me for me is like, you know, it's not just about ex other people accepting you for you. It's about, do you even accept your own self as mm. yourself? Because then when you do, then you are that you, it's so easy to maneuver about through mm. life. It, it yeah. makes it easier for you to maneuver about through life. I think that's an interesting word acceptance because we're, we're constantly looking for acceptance and approval mm -hmm. from the people that we love. And what we should understand is that if they really love us, they'll accept and approve us yeah. just for being ourselves. But in our minds, like you said, it's like, we feel that we have to be a certain way or a certain person in order for people to love us. And that's not true. The people who really love you are going to love you. Yeah. For who you are. And they already see who you are. Yeah. It's just that we haven't really seen it for ourselves, right? Yeah. And I've seen my relationships with people, they've become so much stronger through me showing up as myself, through other people, for them showing up as themselves. Um, yeah. And it's really a beautiful thing. I think it is beautiful. And I think like, you know, you're you're at this point now in your life where you you seem like you're 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 elevating your awareness of who you are and your place in the world and, and how to use your gift to impact other people. Right. Mm -hmm. So you've been traveling all over the place. Like, you know, what are some memories that you have of being on the road and traveling and, and performing? Like what, what, like share one or two things that really stand yeah. out. Memories of traveling, performing. Traveling and performing or traveling in general? Like, what are some, what are some? Oh, gosh, so many different memories. I guess just the memories of just people that I've traveled with um, on the road, um, some of the singers, the musicians, and the connections that you just make with people and how you get to know people, like, on deeper levels. Like, I just love having um, just not surface conversations, but really getting to, um, getting to know people. Yeah. Like, and I, I I'll, like, I'll listen to stories of, you know, that people will say, and I'll just ask questions because I'll dive in deeper. Um, cause I, I will always like, like, what's the root? What causes you to do that? I'm the same. I'm I, the same. I believe that there's always a cause. So yeah. So just connections with people and the joy of, um, traveling with people who have a passion for music. And when you're, like I said, when you're in the right lane with the right people, it feels good. It feels like, yes, this is my purpose. This is my goal. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. And you just, you hold on to that and you bask in that. And um, yeah, so that's, that's some of the, I mean, not a specific memory, but yeah. Well, I, I think, and I think that's, I think that's something that we, you know, a lot of people say, how do I find my purpose? Like there's this magic answer. And, you know, I often tell people it just comes through exploration. Mm -hmm. I never knew that I was supposed to stand on stages or motivate people. I, I, it, it actually happened by mistake. You know, right. I remember one of my friends was um, working at the YMCA teaching job search workshops to young people. And they wanted to, they, they wanted me to take over from, and I was like, absolutely not. I'm not, right. I don't stand in front of people. That's not my thing. You know, I can go and, and coach basketball and all this stuff, but I can't stand in front of, and, and so somehow he talked me into going with him and just to watch. Right. And, and called on me, Danny, what, what, what do you think? And I was like, Oh man, force me to stand up. I tell a little story. After I told the story, a couple of the young people came up to me and they were pretty emotional about my story. And they were like, wow, that was really powerful. And at that point I thought like, wow, my people want to hear my words, right? Like, right. but I still wasn't, I was, I was still afraid of public speaking. Right. And again, I had to go kicking and screaming. Someone else invited me to do something else. And then finally it was like, I think this might be my thing. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I only say that because sometimes, you, you know, you have to get uncomfortable to find that thing that it is for you, right? The, you had to step on the stage to sing in front of people that you know. It might, have been, it might even have been easier to sing in front of people you don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You tell me. <laughs> well, it is because when I'm around people in the, that I know, I never really like singing. <laughs> um, it's easier for me to sing around people I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. So what would you tell people like about, you know, really following their passion or finding their real gift? What, what advice would you give people? Um, gosh, finding your gift. I mean, it's important to ask yourself questions. You know, what is it that you want 
out of life? What, it, what, are you, what are your passions? Like you said, explore. It's okay to try this and try that. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, you go on to the next thing. Um, but um, yeah, just, just ask yourself those questions. Find out what it is that you want. Ask yourself the hard questions. Right. Don't box yourself in. Yeah. You know, don't, don't do what other people want you to do. Do what you want to do for yourself. That's so and good. find your tribe. Find your tribe. It's so important to find your tribe, your people that, that you can be yourself around, that will allow you to grow and that will hold you accountable so that you can grow. Because um, it's important to have, to have accountability. You know, sometimes we just think, okay, yeah, it's okay for me to show up as myself, but do you have people who are holding you also accountable? And, um, yeah. Yeah. Accountability is big, you know, especially, you know, in, in, in coaching, I often talk to people about, you know, surrounding yourself with people who are going to make you do what you say you want to do. Yeah. Right. And, and, and force you to get uncomfortable and to stretch and grow yourself. Yeah. You know, we, we both come from a place where we know a lot of people who are still doing the same things and mm -hmm. the same way that they've been doing it for the last 20 years. And, you know, in order to become the, the better version of yourself, you have to be around people that encourage you and yeah. inspire you, right? Like, or otherwise you just get comfortably uncomfortable going yeah. to the same job, being around the same people, having the same conversations. It's like, man, you know, sometimes you ever have a conversation with somebody and you're like, we had this same conversation 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Why are we still, yeah, exactly. why are we still talking about the same right. things over and over? They haven't evolved in their thinking, yeah. right? So you're right. Your tribe. No elevation. Yeah. Your tribe is really, really important. You, you say. Yeah. So like you're changing certain mindsets, you know, and I love talking with people who have different perspectives. Because sometimes when you talk to people who have different perspectives, you kind of step back after and you're just like, oh, okay, I never even thought about it that way. Right. And then it kind of, you know, you, it kind of changes, you know, changes sometimes things for yourself. Yeah, you know, I, I think you're, you're right. And, um, you know, you sound like you've done a lot of self-reflection and personal growth and you sound like you're really kind of just... Um, stepping into who you think you, you want to be or who you want to be and, and sharing that with the world. Now, what, what, what can people expect from the album? Um, gosh, what can people expect? It's kind of everything we talked about yeah. on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, All of it. Yeah, it, it's, to me, the album is very eclectic. You know, you have different sounds. It's, you have, um, you know, Me For Me, which is very soulful. You have um a uh, good company which is kind of that sensual kind of yeah. vibe to it then you have um keep my feet which is kind of like a pop kind of vibe you have hands hands is very very personal personal it's me talking to my younger self mm. um but uh yeah so you have that which is kind of like a power ballad i guess you could kind of say it is. um so yeah i mean there's and you have the inter, I call it the interlude, which is uh, good love, which has a gospel kind of feel to it. Yeah, um, that song is really. When I heard that, I was like, "Whoa, this is like, it, it is a gospel song. It has yeah. that kind of feel, but it's like this. You know, gospel has this big, powerful. Like mm -hmm. if you're if you're in a room with people singing gospel, it just fills up the room. And that's what I felt like on that track. I was like, oh, this is like taking me back to church, man. This yeah, 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 yeah. So it has that feel to it. So the album is very eclectic. The, the lyrics are very personal. They're, um, you know, it's authentic. It's genuine. It's, it's me. It's yeah. me. Yeah. Like this album is me. Yeah. And so I'm excited to release the album and just to see, you know, where I will elevate to, you know, what's next for me. And I'm excited for that. And I'm open to you know, what God and what the universe has for me. And what do you want to be next for you? Like, what, 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 what do you want the next level to be for you? Or what experiences do you want to have that you haven't had so far? Yeah, I just want to be able to travel and, and, and um, to share my music and to perform live, um, to get out there and, 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 and tour and um, share my music, not just, you know, that album, but share my previous albums, which showcases my journey. Um, 
and, and just work with other artists, work with other producers. I want to work with creatives. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I've loved working with on this album is like v videos and, and thinking of visuals and what are we going to do? Visuals and, and are amazing. I always want, yeah, and I always want my visuals to be meaningful. Um, so there has to be like meaning behind, you know, everything that I do. Um, yeah. So who, who do you want to work with that you haven't had a chance to work with? Like who, who are some artists uh, that you want to work with? Um, I, I would say Anderson Pack like inspired some, some of, like I went, listened to a, a bit of his albums and some of his sound like just inspired the album. Um, I would love to work with him. Um, love to work with like a Pharrell. Um, I've always been a fan of like Lauren Hill. Like mm -hmm. I put on her like, Whoa. I mean, a lot of people love the Miss Education album. I love the Unplugged album. Um, so I would just love to be in the same space with her and create with her. Um, Drake, I wouldn't mind working with Drake. Okay, we yeah. put, we're, we're putting all this out there. All of this yeah. is like, Drake, if you're listening, Lauryn Hill, <laughs> yeah, Pharrell, yeah, yeah. Anderson, Pat, listen, you know, get at my man, Gary. He got something right. for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I will accept the call. I'm waiting. Man, that's amazing. Uh, we're going to finish up here in a minute, but, you know, I, 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 in terms of like the visuals, right? Like people really need to see the visuals on this album. The visuals are incredible. How did you come up with some of these, these, the, the, the visuals for the album, you know? Um, the in, uh, well, in terms of like the vision lyrically, you mean? Well, no, just like some of the the images that you have, and I saw you, I saw you guys shot the video. Um, I think it was oh, yeah. the video for me, for me. Ah, uh, the video for um, Blood Red Roses. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, that, yeah. Those snippets look amazing, man. Yeah, I'm excited to release that. It's like a feel good vibe because it's funny because uh, me for me is about you know embracing everything that we are, and um, Blood Red Roses is about celebrating everything yeah. that we are. And so, um, yeah, I'm excited to release um, or, or to yeah to release blood red roses the video for people to see that and then i also i'm doing a remix i've done well the remix is completed for blood red roses mm. um so i um, like in the process of kind of uh, working creatively with my director um to kind of yeah put a video to that which i'm really excited about um yeah so when is the video coming out when's the album drop when when's all that happening um, well, the video um, will be out like within days. It may even be out now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <It's here>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was supposed to release the video like in two days. Okay. Um, yeah. So the album comes out sometime in October. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I so don't have a, there's not a, yeah, a specific date. That's okay. Just give people an idea when to look for it. It's so, in the air, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 changes, it's in the so. air. We we need it in the in the Spotify, in the Apple, we I, need I it know. in the, in the phone. That's where I, I need know. it. There's been a little bit of changes, so like yeah, of course. it's um yeah, but October. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, but I'm just excited to keep doing visuals for this album, and uh, yeah, just visuals. Make it visuals fun. are awesome. So. You know, before we wrap up here, I'd like to ask a couple, like two final questions I'm going to ask you uh, before you tell people where they can follow, find you. But what does, what does grind mean to you? The word grind and hustle, what does that mean to you? Oh, uh, grind, grind and hustle. Grind means putting in the work. It means doing, um, working toward a goal, a purpose. Uh, grind, yeah, when I think of grind, like, I, I, this is my what this I, I'm a first time home buyer and this is my like one year anniversary. Congratulations! And I grind. I I put in some work to um to get this place. You know, I I worked a nine to five. I was gigging every weekend and I was grinding, but I was grinding toward a purpose, toward a goal, so that now I can just I can just I can't just sit back but I can slow down a little bit. I don't need to grind as hard. Um, yeah, I'm grinding this album, you know, putting it, it's an independent project. I'm putting money behind it wow. and I may not reap, you know, the benefits, but um, there's a goal. I have yeah. a goal. I have a vision. I have a purpose. And so that's what grinding, 
that's what grind means grind means to me wow um, and and the, and the last question what is gratitude to you oh gratitude just just being grateful grateful for whatever your beliefs are grateful to the universe to god um grateful being thankful um yeah to wow. gratitude just showing up and just basking in the moments grateful for this conversation yeah. you know and the more grateful you are the more God will continue to, you know, bless you. And the more good energy will come your way. It's funny because this morning I woke up and I was like, yeah, I'm grateful. I went to the gym and I came back from the gym and I was cycling back. And there was this uh, black lady on her bike and she, we looked at each other and we just smiled at each other and it was so nice. And then I was walking and there was this white gentleman and we just looked at each other and we smiled. And I'm just like, even in those moments, I'm grateful for those interactions. And it's, it's beautiful energy. It's positive energy that we need to put out into the, to the world. And, um, so I'm just, I'm just grateful for life. Yeah. I just love grateful that, for the journey. I'm man. grateful for the process. I'm grateful for just growing and, and understanding and, and going through rough times because that has really made me so much stronger. That has made me um, the man that I am today. And I'm grateful for that. I believe it. I can see the growth in you, man. I can hear, I can hear that you've gone through some type of transformation. I can hear that, that, that there's a journey there and definitely, you know, obviously your work ethic is, is, is crazy to be where you're at, to be a first time home buyer, to drop this album, putting your own money behind it. And then the, the gratitude, you're right. It's just about waking up grateful, right? Mm -hmm. and, and waking up being thankful for what you have, because when you look at things from that lens, that, that gives you the opportunity to see the blessings that are going to come your way instead mm -hmm. of missing them when you're not focused on exactly. that. So. And mm. even grateful for the support, the amount of support and the love that I receive from people. Like I always say, I'm so grateful because that really like that. Those are the shoulders that I stand on. Like that, that's, that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me moving. And I'm so grateful for that. People have been, been so many people have been blessings in my life. And I'm not where I am because of my doing, but because of other people as well. And so I'm so grateful for that. Well, you know, definitely, you know, I've, I've, I've been a, a friend and in, in, in following you and, and knowing you for a very long time. And, you know, I just want to say I'm really proud of you, um, not just for, you know, your music, but proud of you for being authentic, proud of you for being a voice for so many people, proud of you for, you know, embracing, you know, experiences and, 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 and learning and growing because so many people aren't. So, man, I'm so proud of you, brother. And, you know, I'm going to continue to support you in any way that thank I you, possibly brother. can. And, um, you know, I just want to thank you for, for coming on to the, come on to the show. And I really appreciate you being here, man. I think a lot of people are going to get a, a lot of things out of this conversation. I think you're going to be helping a lot of people with this conversation and your album. So thanks so much for being here, brother. Thank you. And thank you for what you do for having this grind and gratitude show, because it's important for us to grind and it's important for us to, you know, show gratitude and have gratitude. So thank you for that, your contribution. Thank you, my brother. All right. That's it for the grind and gratitude show. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Thanks so much.